This is Off Planet Radio. Hey everybody, welcome. This is Off Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins. It is the month of August in the year 2020, the eye of the needle. We are in it. And um, with me from Boulder, Colorado for this program is a dear friend and somebody that I think we kind of walk parallel worlds together with. Welcome back, Patty Greer. Thank you. It's great to see you again, Randy. It's good to see you. You look better every time I see you now. It's like something's working. I am better. I am better. I'm still battling some things, but overall, I've gained weight. My color is good. Um, I've got a lot, of, a lot of energy back and positivity, sleep. Um, yeah, it's kind of, kind of been a renaissance lately. Um, <clears throat> I'm still suffering ravages of allergies because I live in the mountains, but hey, look at the mountains behind you in Boulder, Colorado, the, the Rockies. Take in that vista, sports fans. That's awesome. Pretty nice. It is. It is. You have a beautiful view there. So we're going to talk about crop circles, something we've not talked about for a number of years. And we're going to talk about, um, I guess, the energies the synchronicities that are weaving into this really meaningful time. And I know you feel the same way I do, that despite the turbulence that we're in and the seeming difficulties that we're going through, we always expected that when we went into this year, we were going to encounter difficulties. We didn't know what they were, but I was calling this 18 months ago. And so now here we are. And what's going on around us is beyond fascinating. As human beings who are evolving into this emergent consciousness, what sayest thou? I totally agree. What an adventure. And I know that we're really lucky to be here at this time. Those of us that aren't living in fear, what a blessing to know what's going on and to watch it actually in real time. Um, but it's important to note that coming outside was brave tonight because you can see the smoke behind me. There's a fire to the north, there's a fire to the south, there's a fire to the west or three, and uh, it's smoky. And I think yeah. about the fires in Australia that we've already forgotten about that friggin' ravaged exactly. Australia. And what's going on there now in those areas, huh? And what about Paradise, California? That was another, wow, unbelievable fire. And I have a That was about a year ago when we saw those. That was the um, Lionsgate 2019 portal, the one that we just passed through over, over the last two weeks. And that Lionsgate thing has a lot of imagery of fire around it. Columns of fire, interestingly enough, we saw that incredible fire in, Be was it Beirut, Lebanon? And then we saw another fire in um, the World Trade Center in Brussels, Belgium. Right. Did you see the, did you see the video of that? This there was an were, amazing video. Yeah, was, there were so many explosions. There were. In that short period of time. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the World Trade Center in Brussels, we saw, I saw the video of it, and it said, um, the future is here, and here's this building that's just engulfed in fires, and kind of like a micro replay of 9-11, which in itself is interestingly retro-prophetic in a kind of strange way. I mean, we're now in this place where, and, and I've described this before, Patty, where in some ways we're moving through this needle. At the same time, we're in a vortex and time will sometimes loop over on itself in very interesting ways. 
And I think we're picking up a lot of the synchronicities and even the reverse synchronicities of images from the past that are looping back through the present. You just totally led into a scientific explanation of crop circles with the counter-rotating vortices. Um, you know, all those words kind of go into the next paragraph of we are and so is the earth. Yeah. What my movies, I made eight films and they're at cropcirclefilms.com. But what my movies explained was that crop circles have been hidden over the years in this nutty field called ufology. Well, we used to have ufology, but it's been infiltrated. There's not much left. Not much now, left at this point, nope. Not much left. And I think it's almost a blessing that there's no conferences. Yes, there. yes, I totally agree. Yeah. So there's some pluses, which we want to focus on some of the pluses that are helping you be healthier, helping me feel healthier, which yeah. is keeping our minds above the fold of fear. Um, I don't have any. I've been through so much. So have you. It's like, yeah, you know. Yeah, but again, just... watching Trump and his son get thrown off Twitter or whatever, um, horrible to do to a president. I mean, that's really stupid. On the other hand, what I experienced for the last 12 years, I'm just watching it going, well, let's see what people with money do with that. Exactly. You know? yeah. yeah. Very interesting times. <laughs> so the crop circles really are coming out of the earth. They're not some UFO thing. And the real ones are certainly not being made by a couple of blokes with boards and ropes that just left the pub after a beer or two. Right, right. And they're not coming from lasers, from satellites in the military. They're actually coming out of the earth, predetermined patterns, and they are flawless with their delivery. Kind of like trees are rather flawless mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. wildflowers. You know, these grow naturally. Rocks, minerals, diamonds, like Come on, who grows those? Not you, not me, the earth herself. So the perfection of the life force of the earth herself is where we have to go to basic energy fields and think, okay, if the earth herself has energy and she wants humanity and those flying around the earth to be able to get some information, what's the language everybody speaks? Art. Art symbols. Symbols. Really powerful symbols. Mathematics. You know, and you just riffed on, um, I, I was sitting today at lunch and I had my iPad with me and I have a, I, a stylus, an Apple pencil that I use to write notes. And I did this meditation on how they're now attempting to use this technology in concert with coronavirus to divorce us from our connection to the earth itself, of how this ultra frenetic paranoia of our biology is being used as an act of terrorism against us to detach us from the earth, to detach us from each other, to make us feel as though we're nothing more than con contagion ridden, ridden vermin. I mean, that's literally the way you feel when you see people out in public and they're fearful. Look. The argument about masks to me is simply this, wear one if you so choose, and don't harass people who don't. If you're masked, you've protected yourself, that's good. But more than anything else, it's the fear that they carry with them. And this now, this just ultra OCD complex over scrubbing hands and wiping everything down and staying germ-free. People, we come from the earth. We are part of the bacteriological process that fomented inside of the earth from the water, from the seas, from the land, from the microorganisms. And I can't help but think that they are divorcing those who are fearful, those who are living in chains to the narrative they're divorcing them from their own biology in order to put them into this uber sterile digital world. This, this simulacrum is what we call it. The worst thing is what I feel it's doing to children. Yeah. How do you explain? Well, we used to go to the ice cream store and have a cone. It's like, what's that? 
I mean, we're already like trying to remember what it was like to do so many things. But I think that there may be ultimately some good to this. Mm-hmm. Even I though we're straying, we're straying away from cross yes. circles. But it's all about consciousness, ultimately. The earth and us. Totally. It's we totally about it. consciousness. It's, that's, pr- that's primary. Yes. It is. So in my final film, Crop Circle Diaries, um, I told the story of how I was given a memory and that very night, it was 1030 Colorado, I just was living in moments of being absolutely stunned because it was this shocking memory of where I was taken when I started making the films. Mm. All of a sudden I saw it and the very next day, that image showed up in a crop circle in England, but it wasn't the next day. 10.30 at night is 3.30 in the morning in the UK. That baby went down when I was screaming, oh my God, oh my God, that crop circle went down. How does that happen? That me, after eight films, focused on crop circles, pretty much gave up my social life, brought um, the man of my dreams twice to England, and when we got back, he didn't say anything, he just, moved out <laughs> it was too much. too much and there's no words when all of a sudden you see oh my god she wasn't making this up my favorite photo was when we're walking in the first crop circle and i said you'll feel it when we're 10 feet before we get to that crop circle formation and the little hairs will stand up on your arm and when i could feel the hairs in the first circle i took him to i turned around and he has these inch long man hairs and his Mm -hmm. eyes were like watermelons Mm -hmm. and i just took the photo it was so great so we're in this huge dichotomy right now of what's real what's not and Crop circles, I can guarantee you 90% of the ones I was in are far more real than this pandemic. Yes, there's a virus. Yes, people are very sick and it's horrible. Yes, exactly. Yep, we're not deniers here. No, and we don't minimize, but when you watch enough brand new now, brand new now videos with real doctors, um, they're saying the mask is filthy. You've been wearing it how many Mm -hmm, days? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like. Now you're seeing people with strephococcus, whatever it's called, bumps all over their mouth from the mask. It's people like- are being treated for cysts. They're now being treated for advanced dental decay as a result of the fact that oxygen is not going into their mouth, which obviously helps to neutralize bacteriological growth like plaque. Um, yeah, we're, see- we're, just, we're seeing the beginning of something that's going to mutate into more advanced stages of other types of diseases. We weren't meant to live like this. Unless we raise the consciousness in this short window called the Great Awakening. Yes. And there's so much false news that we are the news now. Us, sitting on deck, sitting in your house, sitting behind a computer talking to the world, gathering trust for years from people that want to know the truth from Memorex. I mean, wow. I think Hillary just got off. Is that true? Did she get off today? Like she doesn't have to go into court about the 33,000 emails she forgot about? Oops. Which Hillary? Yeah, right. Which one? Which one? I mean, you know, the lookalike, the clone, the one that supposedly lives with Bill? Who knows? What's real? I mean, when, when Donald Trump talks about fake news, I think what he's really telling you is that most of it's a simulation. Most of it is a production of Hollywood. Say goodbye to Hollywood, man. They have been smashed. Thank you, Billy Joel. Yes. Well, you know, we are in this massive change, and we thought it was going to be 2012, but we're a little slow here. So, you know, here we are now in the big 2012 shift of the Great Awakening and I'm having fun. You're having fun because we're both taking really high purity carbon 60, which is ESS 60. Awesome. From C60 Evo. I actually took a spoonful before there you the, go, the purple bottle. It's beautiful. The purple label. Yeah, it is. That's the olive oil is what uh, we recommend. That's yes. what Randy's taken also. Some, um, if you don't have the gear in your lab, you won't know that no matter how long you stir it, 
olive oil will hold more carbon 60, C60, ESS60 than any other oil uh, that we've tested yet. And the lowest concentration is consistently in coconut oil. Mm -hmm. So I was taking coconut oil C60 for like a year and a half and I thought it was so good. And then I tried the, the C60 Evo olive oil and it was like speed. I was like, whoa, slow the horses down. It really uh, shifted my entire C60 experience. And I didn't realize not only was it a different company, but a different concentration. So the concentration yeah. is how much C60 is in your mixture, in your spoonful. And um, uh, what I know is that olive oil will hold 0.8 milligrams per milliliter Avocado holds 0.6, and coconut oil, no matter how much you put in it, no matter how long you stir it, will hold only 0.35. Right. It's because of suspension properties in the oils themselves. Now, people oh, don't understand this. You, what you put in this bottle is still in the bottle, but how it suspends inside of the oil itself determines the concentration per, per serving. We don't use the term dose. That's a medical term. So per serving. Got it. Yeah. Well, back to the consciousness of the earth being so incredibly powerful, as we are so incredibly powerful. I was going to the crop circles in southern England, which had been the epicenter since the 1980s that we know of. And there were documented crop circles that always went on to a few websites. My favorite is still cropcircleconnector.com. I highly mm -hmm. recommend people yep. join. It's like a 25 pound um, membership, but now it's a lifetime, which is like $40. You sign up once, cropcircleconnector.com. And uh, it's so worth it because whenever there's a new crop circle, within a day or two, you'll get photos, location, comments from those of us that are in the fields. I'm not there anymore. But I want to talk about why I'm not there anymore because that's what's interesting to me about what happened to crop circles. So there were an average of, golly, 150 crop circles documented. Now, again, there could have been 1,000 10,000 crop circles that happen every year. We just didn't see them or report them or document them or fly over them or walk near them or have a farmer, you know, call on his bullhorn. Hey, you know, tell, yeah. So there's a lot we don't hear about, but the ones we did averaged about 150 to 175 during the years when I was there, 2007, eight, nine, 10, you know, up to, 2014, I was really active in the crop circles. And I would go to England and rent a and b for nine weeks and just be there. I didn't do anything else. I didn't want to ever talk to anybody hardly in the crop circles because it's a long way to go from America. You know, it's a pretty spectacular experience, which you want. I wanted to just be there with the earth. Yeah. I'd always go in the center, put my head down, and uh, in 2007, it was my second year, I passed out at the end of summer and I had taken a lot of photos, uh, rolls and rolls and rolls. Back then it was rolls. Um, it may have been digital, um, but it was, uh, God, I took a lot. And I knew that it was something really unusual because the little teeny hairs and the, you know, the tingles on the top of the head, it was energetically such a stellar experience. So, um, I went back every year and it was always really friendly farmers. And if you went in June, July, July's best because then there's May, June, July crop circles already in the fields laid. So if you fly for half an hour, an hour with the micro lights, which are really expensive, you can see a lot of crop circles in the course of a half hour. So going in July is great. August, too late. They're mowing out the fields and they're selling the wheat. Um, some of the companies would sell crop circle wheat uh, as something special. They nice. make crop circle beer, yeah. they make crop circle bread, uh -huh. but it was short lived. I'm sure it was just in that area. But I found myself, because I didn't know any better, that the farmers were already spraying the wheat, um, eating the weed in the center of the crop circle. I was like, oh, it's so sweet, you know, and 
thinking I was getting all spiritually high, not realizing that they had just sprayed it with whatever it was over there. And I did learn directly from a farmer who said, oh, yes, we just sprayed yesterday. It was like, shoot, you know, because I'm, yeah. I'm like eating it, feeling like I was doing something grand for myself. <laughs> but all of a sudden in 2014, 2013, it started getting unfriendly. And there was a lot more military presence at the pub and the restaurants. And it wasn't friendly anymore. The farmers were told if you want to have your weekly, monthly um, money from the government, you will mow out the crop circles and not let the researchers in. So all of a sudden the farmers were like, not so friendly. And there was no longer the coin box where it would say, you know, drop a couple pounds in the box and we'd all drop pounds in people were stealing the boxes. So the farmers quit doing it. And then when the military or the government even started saying to some of the farmers, mow out the field, we got to nip this. I stopped going. It's kind of like, I mean, it was just obvious, but it took the earth herself a few years. And this is what I found so incredibly fascinating. In 2019, one of the first crop circles in May was this big brown yin yang. Now when I say brown, that means end of the season, the wheat, corn, barley, whatever it is, is dry. If it's green, it's supple and movable. If it's corn, it's like you know, a big harsh stalk that curves gracefully. So here's this crop circle that shows up and it's almost a perfect yin yang Except the male, I believe, ball is outside the circle. Mm. This started 2019. And because I kind of read them like books when they're this good, it was like, whoa, number one, Poland? Number two, look at the lay of the circles. They're flawless. Yeah. It looks like a DVD or a CD. They're so smooth. Well, this looks like it's burnished metal. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's stunning, and this is just this isn't black and white, but yeah. it's it's a stunning image. So and it, yeah, and so so what I see here is the rebalancing of the energies. That's what I think this message was, was that they were bringing back that divine feminine, twenty twelve yes. return to Quetzalcoatl or whatever it is. The great awakening, the kindness, the goodness. It's men, it's women, it's not just ladies. It's just that divine nature. So to spit out that circle just cracks me up. I mean, really. Is that you just, um, I just covered this in the last show that I did, which is my Eye of the Needle series. I talked about this comet Neowise that just passed, passed through um, the end of end of July, probably coming in around the same time as the full moon in July, uh, Comet Neowise passed through not too far from the Lion's Gate in the sky. And synchronistically, a lot of what happens in the way I work with this show now is I'm writing, but I'm writing from an intuitive standpoint. When I saw Neowise, I went, oh, that's interesting. This is the new wisdom. Well, the new wisdom is Sophia, the Sophia Pistis, and the Solomonic personalization of wisdom is Sophia. So the Neowise, to me, symbolized the incoming feminine energy, which is this new wisdom, this new awakening. Somebody said new eyes. That's a good way to look at it as well. So we're kind of, the earth's giving us messages, the sky is giving us mes messages about where we're at in, in terms of emergent consciousness. Yes, beautiful. Well, that one starting last year was the first time where I went, wait a minute, I got to be watching, you know, what the messages are. So then all of a sudden, all these years where out of 150 or 175, at least 75, we're in Southern England. I mean, this area of Wiltshire gets pelted and that goes all the way to Stonehenge, 
and all the way to Glastonbury and everywhere in between is in this huge vortex of sacred sites. And what we know about crop circles is 90, 90 high 90% of them arrive on an aquifer of water. Mm -hmm. So they're sitting over water and that is important in their formations with the earth energies. The other is that they're always sitting on a ley line, which is a direct line between two sacred sites. So when you've got this area of Southern England lays to a sacred sites, Stonehenge, Avery Stone Circle, Kennet Longborough, all these different places where the ancients used to walk across Europe to just bring their pilgrimage to Southern England because there were all these very high frequency sacred sites it is still there. And that's what kept the epicenter there until 2019. Oh my God, last year, I kept looking going, wait a minute, that doesn't look like an English crop circle because we have different similarities. Like there's many, many, many that are sacred geometry, which is a perfect circle. And then they're symmetric from the center out in all directions. I like to print them put a pin in the middle and spin the paper and it looks like propulsion. Most of them mm. are sacred geometry that look like propulsion technologies of who knows what spaceships, underwater yeah. ships. Well, yeah. I mean, we talk about UFOs, but we don't really know what technology is here on the earth or maybe under the ground itself with some of our, let's just say, lost civilization, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is beckoning towards the symbology of free energy. I mean, magnetic spin would be another way to look at it. Mm -hmm. And some very powerful energies that are portrayed in that. Well, pull up the screenshot of the French crop circles, because what happened in 2019 was the epicenter actually moved to France. I think it was still kind of close, but by um, July, it was like all France. All the crop circles, it felt like, had left England and gone to France. And I was like, go Earth, you know, because she's just over it. If they're telling the farmers to not let us in, they're telling the farmers to mow out the fields, they're threatening them that, um, crop circles are no longer welcome she's like there you go i got france so off she goes and again mostly sacred sites hmm. definitely over an aquifer yeah and france is loaded too right yeah but look at the difference in the crop circle images what i found similar and very telling was that there's always a center axis if you just imagined a straight line in each one of these five, other than number four, number four reminds me of the UK, but the other four are what I'm talking about. You've got crescent moons and round planets or suns, planets. So what this graceful year of moving the crop circles to France for most of the summer, I see a woman dancing. Can you see that in number one and number mm -hmm. five with the arms yes. up? Yeah. I, I mean, what a great. Yeah, exactly. Like to this. Me, yeah. There you go. So we started with the one in Poland in a dry, brittle field that says we're spitting out that other, you know, that dark, um, old, you know, negative right. energy. Yeah, yeah. And now we're moving into this beautiful dancing, arms up, celebrating divine feminine energy. And it was, there were even more of these crop circles, but there weren't the type that I'm used to seeing in England. The um, Morse code, the sacred geometry, the mathematics, the Fibonacci sequence. No, no, no. France was divine grace, divine feminine other than number four. And there may have been a couple of exceptions, but there were 17 in France last year, which was a first that I know of. So I thought, wow, look at the earth herself telling the world, fine, you wanna be nasty? 
There's other places I can go. And I think that England really missed it. I think the people, the sacred people, the farmers, I think everybody missed it. Even though there were still crop circles in England, I think the attention had kind of moved and uh, it was on purpose. I just felt like it was very symbolic of what we're going through and that surrender that we need to feel. So this year, seeing them back in England and seeing a lot of, you know, the usual but still unique patterns of sacred geometry has been very um, kind of comforting, you know, that England isn't over. But I, th I thought it was an interesting threat. And when we talk about crop circles coming out of the earth, I do want to explain it a little more clearly because most people are thinking, what does that mean? So let's just can we pause here one yeah. second because I just noticed something. Number two is Notre Dame de France. Um, how telling that it's in Notre Dame where that beautiful cathedral was burned, and what this may indicate in terms of some sort of resurrection. Mm. I'm, I'm just looking at it abstractly. And that's in, those are ascending arcs there, mm -hmm. as if coming up from the ground, which is the source of energy. And let's face it, a lot of these cathedrals in Europe, including Notre Dame, were built on ley lines that were basically the ancient ley lines of pagan, pagan groups, religions, very sacred, earth-centered um, spiritual systems. And so, in a sense, what we're seeing is kind of the decline of this, this monolithic system and the rise of something, again, you know, number two ta just talks to me of, of this ascendancy of these arcs. And look at it. It's like flying. It's like soaring. It is. Yeah, it is a different direction than the others energetically. Mm, yeah. So I interrupted you, please go ahead. Oh no, it's, I mean, there's so many ways to look at crop circles. And I remember uh, in my early years when I was sitting with all the regular crappies, which <laughs> crappies. crappies, that was us. Yeah. You get up, you go find a crop circle. Mm -hmm. You have coffee at the research center, you look at the map, you go find the crop circle. So yeah, we, we'd see each other, we'd just kind of wave. But the formations, as you're looking at number one, for example, if you walk in any part of it, you think, oh, wow, what a beautiful circle. And you don't realize there's 12 more. I mean, each one of those elements, every circle of the arms, one, two, three, each one of those you're in, you feel like that's it. That's your crop circle. And then there's a teeny little path opening. Oh my God, there's a bigger circle. And then a bigger one. Isn't that really speaking to kind of even the construct that we're in yes. as humans? You know, we're in a construct, whatever you want to call it, a world, a planet, um, a toroidal field. But we don't really have a sense of it because we only experience it from the periphery of our visual sense and our, and our energetic body. So we're in a constant state of discovery of something that we only get a view of topologically if we rise above it, which is a kind of interesting metaphor for the crop circle itself. You're experiencing it inside of it energetically. Mm-hmm. But you can't see the pattern until you're above it. Exactly. Ooh, wow. Was that a big one? <laughs> right? Can't... Exactly. So the first time I went to fly, I had this big movie camera that I barely knew how to use other than here's on, here's zoom, and hang on tight. We're going in a small plane. So... I pay the guy, he knows I'm new, and he says, door on or door off. I'm like, what does that mean? And he says, on your side of the plane, do you want a door? I'm just staring like you're kidding. You're messing with me, aren't you? Mm -hmm. And he goes, professionals don't want a door. Right. 
I was like, oh, ouch. Okay, no door. So I, I go to put on my halter, you know, my big, huge support yep. system. And it's only like a man's belt with one little snap. And I'm like, where's my, where's the rest of the seat belt? Oh, that's it. Tighten up, headset on. I was like, you must be kidding me. So anyway, yeah, flying in the planes above the crop circles with no door on my side. You've done this I flying in a helicopter over a glacier in Alaska. It's kind of intimidating when you realize there's nothing really between you and that drop. Right. Pretty interesting, yeah. So you had no doors on also? No doors on the copter, no. Wow. Yeah, it was open-sided. Yeah, it's kind of like riding a motorcycle, but because in the sky. <laughs> it was really designed just to shuttle you from a, a landing pad off onto the glacier. So it's a very short trip, but it was, it was awesome. And it was cold and it was brisk. It was amazing. But I'm yeah. imagining a plane doing that and that's like, whoa. Yeah. There was some weather I flew in where um, the pilot would say to a short line of us wanting to fly, it's really, really bad up there. It's very, very bumpy. You'll be very nauseous. Does anybody really want to fly? And I was always <laughs> the American. I'd raise my hand and go, I will. Oh, God queasy for hours afterward, <laughs> but wow. I got the shot. I got the shot before they mowed out the field. No, I was relentless. I was ruthless when I was filming because um, from that first formation I walked in, it was so shockingly real to my body and so transcendent to my mind. I mean, there's no way you can deny it. It's like when you jump into freezing water, there's no way you can deny it because every ounce of you feels it. I felt it. Every ounce of me absolutely felt the crop circles. And why is that? Why is the energetic field so high? And um, I know now that I'm the only crop circle crappie that was not only in more than 100 crop circles, but I'm the only one that got invited into William Levengood's lab. Mm. And um, yeah. that's what made my movies maybe threatening to those that don't want um, the information getting out about, it's not even an advanced technology. What it is is an earth energy that was learned and um, experimented on in the lab of William Levengood long enough for him to figure out how to use the, um, the crop circle energies to recreate what was happening to the seeds. And what was happening to the seeds once the plant is bent over, it continues to grow. So when it got hit and the wheat bent, hundreds of thousands of them bent, they continued to grow. So the farmer did not lose his crop and they were trying to figure out how on earth did all those pieces of crop bend? There's a big ball right at the bend on a lot of them, which means that something heated it up and it expanded that piece of the wheat stalk or grain stalk, and then it bent over. And then 80,000 of them bent that way. So they're given whatever the coded energy is to lay that crop down. It's an intelligent energy, first off. Very intelligent energy. And when it comes up out of the earth, what we have seen is balls of light. And I have two different film footages of balls of light that I didn't take that were gifted to me by people I trust. And both of them had balls of light creating a crop circle in seconds. And what we saw was, it just looked like a ball of light, but literally what we saw, which I learned from William Levengood or his information after he'd passed, was that it's the base of a spinning vortex of different layered frequencies that are spinning. There's two of them counter rotating from each other. So coming out of the earth, we have counter rotating pair of spinning vortices. They get faster and faster. And when they get really fast, right at the base, it show, shows up as a ball of light to the human eye. But what you're seeing is the base of a spinning plasma field. And when those two light up, it takes only a second, the field goes down. It happens 
in merely a few seconds. And we've seen it. We have, um, I've had my work um, lied about and then um, I luckily was gifted actual footage of that same person that said my stuff was uh, a mistake. He was actually admitting to a Native American shaman that it was very real. And mm. that guy handed me the footage and it's in my final film. So, you know, for me, a lot of people tried to get my work quieted, my work hidden, whatever. Why? Because the seeds in crop circles are growing 30 to 400% more food and biofuel per plant with up to 75% more nutrition per seed. How? Well, it doesn't just happen when the wheat bends. It happens when those seeds are locked away from light and water for a certain amount of months. I mean, it was a freak accident where all of a sudden the growth chamber testing all those seeds that were growing in crop circles, yeah, they were doing better than the normal seeds. But when William Levin Good found in the back corner of his desk a little envelope of dried up shriveled seeds that had been in there for a number of months, he was looked at the package and he started to throw it in the trash. And that little voice said, don't do it. Put it in the germination chamber. And he's looking at these seeds and they're so shriveled. He said, no proper seedsman would ever plant these. But he did. He put them in the, in the uh, germination chamber and they grew like gangbusters. They grew faster than any of the other starts. And he thought, whoa. So he had to dry up a bunch more seeds, hide them in the back of the lab somewhere. And when he brought them out and repeated the test, it was far greater than just the seeds uh, fresh from the field. So there was this little bit of time lapse that happened. But what we have here is a science, in my opinion, that can help save the food supply. And that, my friends, is why they're still showing you couple of drunks with boards and ropes on ancient aliens. Yeah, we just made this crop circle. What do you think? Yeah. While they while they continue to attempt to bury Levin Good's work. I meant to grab, except I came outside at the last minute. Right. I have William Levin Good's pipe. I have his smoking pipe with a carved ivory horse. I also have his alien celluloid bookmark. But what's fascinating about it is that it, um, it looks like Trump's symbol. Um, what is that thing called? The Punisher. Lefty, William Levengood, had like the Punisher alien bookmark. So I've got three different things of lefties. Uh, and he literally came and took me out of my life, scared the crap out of me a few times. And I thought, you know, perhaps I was imagining this, but I was floating on such a different frequency when I was making those movies that it was really no surprise that a year after he left, he came and got me and brought me to meet Penny Kelly. And I tell the whole story in my movie Crop Circle Diaries, which I highly recommend. Yeah. And I've got seven films before that. But the movie's free if you go cropcirclefilms.com forward slash free. If people watch Crop Circle Diaries, they'll know there's a much bigger picture. Kind of like if people watch Fall of the Cabal Now or Shadowgate or um, Out of Shadows. I mean, we have everything we need now to understand what's real, but it's being really hidden so they can shove out what they want us to think. Is there not, would you say, a message that the earth is trying to send us? At the same time that we have what I will call, because of what I know about the research into COVID-19, is an engineered man-made virus unleashed upon us either purposely or unwittingly, but nevertheless in what I will call an engineered bio-attack on planet Earth. At the same time, the Earth is attempting to communicate with us a path forward that removes us from this mechanistic, biologically-based science that we have been ensnared in for hundreds of years. 
back into the secrets of energy which the earth itself contains which contains everything that we need mm -hmm. i mean first food energy abundance harmony when you i went out today i had a stressful morning i went out of my office and i laid down in the grass for just 10 minutes and looked up at what were incredibly azure blue skies the last few days here in Pennsylvania. No chemtrails. In that five minutes, I felt the earth massage me. The energies came in. They just, I got up from the ground and I felt restored. And this is just how simple it is to reconnect back to these energies. And it's only a sample of what earth really wants to give us right now. I agree. So what did the earth give us to start this year's summer crop circles? Boy, oh boy, she just socked it to us right in the beginning. She hit us with a splat of a virus crop circle. Now, when we saw it, it wasn't like a question, what's that? You know, there's different ways to develop and to deliver messages. One of them is a pictogram. To me, that's a splat of a virus. And the articulations, the details in the close-up nature of those ends of the um, arms that come out with the ball at the end were surprisingly clean. And when I look at a crop circle, for me, it's about precision. Is it real? Is it human made? Um, if you see circles that are imperfect or shapes that are imperfect, it's pretty clearly made by humans. But this one to me looked clean. What do you think? I'm hard pressed to say this could be human made. There's just something about it that's elegant. Yeah, and the shading. Like it's so atypical in terms of what we normally see, like you said, about you know the sacred geometries and the standard kind of coded messages. But look at what this is communicating in terms of a biological form and what we understand about things like viruses and the I mean, the coronavirus itself is, is almost as famous as a movie star right now. Those images, those so-called images that we see, the stained um, presentations of, of COVID. So this actually is in that, in that realm. Yeah. Well, whatever that arm is, the long neck and the thing with the pins at the end that are shading like pins is a very interesting statement. And... I'm sure that medical people or people that are biological experts might see a lot more. Um, the title of this one was White Blood Cells Something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. Did we get a title for it? Yeah, it's hidden. White under Blood Cell Attacks Virus. White so Blood Cell Attacks Virus is the name of the crop circle. Uh, well, it's just somebody's explanation. Right, it's right. a human's perception. It's like what we're doing, right? It's, it's an interpretation. But I thought it might be a good one. It just yeah. felt like, ooh, that went on my uh, title. But bam, when that came down, it was May. It's like we were already in it, but we didn't know that they'd drag it out this long and, you know, make it go on forever and keep the fear going. And, you know, so... This was the only really abnormal one of the summer in England where most of them have gone back to. Um, and I've been watching them. There was, golly, I think 16 in July alone, four in August so far. Mm -hmm. And now the fields are, you know, very dry. So it's kind of hard to lay that wheat. But this one I thought was extremely telling. I think right now we're seeing a lot of anomalies. And you and I talked about this before we started this through this recording, that I have begun to notice, even in nature itself, a number of 
what I consider to be synchronistic, symbolic things that are speaking to me. One of them is um, an abundance this year of circada, mm. which are quite beautiful to hear. And then dragonflies and various varieties of dragonflies. And in places I've never seen dragonflies before. One of them is a place my viewers may remember this in June when I did the shamanic summoning at a place called Kinkura, which is in Cove, Pennsylvania, on a stream. And I went up there and stood on the breach of the rocks and, and, and recorded a show. And when I was up there that day, there were dragonfly and there were several species. And I've gone back twice since, they're still there, but I've seen them around my yard. I see them in almost urban settings. There's something going on with dragonfly right now and what it's communicating to us. Just as a symbolism, which is like this crop circle. This crop circle to me is anomalous. It's not normally what we see, especially in England. And yet there's something about it in its energy that speaks to me that says, yeah, that's real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was a direct message too. You know, I, I live on a hillside, it's all rock. And um, I have a surprising garden because I like gardens and I keep the water going, you know, where I can. But I had somebody come help me weed because the weeds here are as tall as me. <laughs> so I waited till it rained and then I called this lady very quickly and I said, okay, it rained, get over here fast. And I said to her, what's gonna be unusual is that I, I love weeds that flower. And I um, yeah. made an agreement with my garden that if you flower, you can stay. My whole life I've been like this. If you flower, you can stay. Mm -hmm. Which is nice, if we knew better about dandelions, we'd have a lot more food. That's right. Certain types of thistles. Yeah. Right. Now, what did you say about thistles? Thistles. Flowering thistles. Most of them are medicinal and quite, quite beautiful. I mean, you probably have different breeds where you live in, in the Rockies than we do here in the mountains of Pennsylvania. But there's hundreds of varieties of thistles, some of which are very medicinal when you know how to apply them herbally. Well, uh, interesting because thistle was the plant that I was about to talk about. <laughs> so we are in sync. We are in yeah, the we are, we are. loop. Yeah. So this, this lady shows up and I said, okay, you know, we're going to carve away this, carve away that. And all of a sudden, Chubby, my little squirrel, I have two of them, shows up and hits the huge steep hillside of, of what's it called? Vine, vine weed bindweed and it throws these beautiful pink flowers and i said believe it or not leave the bindweed and she said but it grows up and wraps around everything i said those will cut but the rest of it is like food for the wildlife and all of a sudden chubby and his girlfriend my squirrels show up i've never seen them down pink flowers that fast they were like <laughs> watch us and yeah. Just one of them was like, num, 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 num. he ate four of them so fast. I'd never seen anything like it. And I said, see? <laughs> but last year when I moved in here, um, there was a beautiful deer that lived under the deck I'm sitting on. And once I was here a couple months, I weeded the front hill. She left me. Mm -hmm. She moved out. Yeah. And so I thought, wow, why screw with nature? So this year I left the thistles, but I trimmed them back just on my stairway so they didn't bite me sure. you know, yeah yeah it. yeah i mean they're not fun to walk through at all holy crap the butterflies the butterflies and the hummingbirds they must see the thistle from a block away we don't have blocks here i'm in the woods but i mean they come from nowhere i haven't seen like you you've got the dragonflies i've had the butterflies we've seen we've seen butterflies here this year too my mother told me before she passed in 2009, she had, she had, she loved butterflies. And she said that they were disappearing. And she wasn't wrong. Oddly enough, this year, I've seen species of butterflies here that I haven't seen since my mom departed this earth. Mm -hmm. Here in my backyard, 
we have a butterfly bush out here and we have some other types of things that attract different different animals different birds and the variety of butterflies that i'm seeing mother earth wants to throw a renaissance right now she really does she wants to throw a party <laughs> to tell us you're okay you know we know you think you're sick but we have everything you need to cure here we have food we have abundance we have energy we have beauty we have restoration listen to us that's the message i keep getting from nature this year do you know what else is i'm sorry to say good about this reset <laughs> don't get mad don't throw it no 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 i i totally agree with you is that we've all stopped shopping we are not consuming and over consuming um so many things that we used to buy regularly and a lot of people are going broke because we're not but also we're not throwing away all that trash onto the earth so there's a really nice rekindling of taking less and throwing out less going on right now and far less chemtrails far less yeah totally the skies here have been gorgeous now we get our days we get our days when we get uh either flyovers or we get what is the the spring that drifts as a result of them spraying into the prevailing winds but on total we've had so many spectacular days when the skies were unimpeded and the skies at night of being able to go out and see comet neowise as it's crossing the, the arc of the sky of being able to see a glimmer of the lion's gate at orion's belt um yeah it's a gift um there's not a lot of places to hide right now because there's not much traffic up there there's not many people flying I and just, the, yeah. the consumer culture while we lament it economically we have to wean ourselves away from it to whatever degree we can it doesn't mean we throw everything away it means that we become wise again about it and in doing so we become more human and we turn our ear and we start to hear the voice of nature that's what i've gotten from this that's what i got from lockdown after weeks of despairing over this and being depressed and sick i was like wait a minute how many times have you said well i wish i had a month that i could just sit and meditate and think and i was like well i guess they just handed it to you didn't they yeah yep. yeah the whole world got handed that mostly a break amazing, amazing that it's gone this far yeah like it's not just us it's all of us <laughs> But now you've got this bizarre ISIS mentality thinking that they can go into different cities and now go into neighborhoods and just break into homes and say yeah. you're privileged get out of your nice house cuz I want to get in it and this is all part of that too and I mean we know this we know that going back to the 60s the extreme leftist movements I have nothing against protests I was part of the anti-war movement. I was part of the civil rights movement. I've marched for all kinds of things, civil rights, gay rights, black rights. I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem with the destruction and with the agenda which only empowers the ruling elite who pay people to go into public places and deface property and upset civil order and lawless governors and mayors of major cities. who have basically given them license to be complete deviants to the norms of society and decent people burning out their own people's businesses um this is all part of the counter game this is what the world economic forum in davos is calling quote their reset but guess what this is an organic reset it's our reset and we can't let them take it from us mother earth our consciousness is ascending 
and they want to co-opt that because they are scared, dare I say, spitless of what's coming in human next phase 3.0. And what's coming is the exposure of their behavior behind closed doors. It's already happening. Yep, yeah. it's already happening. Well, it's going to be shocking, you know, when the general <laughs> mass is... Yeah, it's definitely going to be shocking. There's so many great things, though, but I think the shock of this wasn't about a virus, this was about human trafficking. Yeah. And the thing about Davos that was fascinating was that all the demons were at Davos. Mm -hmm. And Trump walked in late, very proud, but very late, on purpose to make a statement. And what I want to say about Trump, and this is love him or hate him, this I want to say about President Trump. The only way that I will ever discuss with people President Trump is if you're actually looking at what he says. And I think this is the great divide is that people that hate him have not watched any of his pressers because they hate him. So they don't realize what he's doing. But to heck with watching him speak, go to search Executive Orders 2020 and just mm -hmm, look mm -hmm. at what he's pulled off because, in my opinion, uh, nobody's ever done this in history. Nobody's ever had the Senate and the Congress hate him as much as Trump in history. So we've never had a president who's working this alone when it comes to this group of penguins, I mean Congress, that are supposed to be a cluster <laughs> rather than a cluster fook. You know, um, they, when he says yes, they say no. When he says hydroxychloroquine, they say no, it's poisonous. You know, um, I think that we could get the mask debate over with quickly if we sent out a, a billion free ones that said, make Trump, 20, 20, Trump 2020 on a bright red mask and put it around our ears. They would take the mask thing out of here quickly if everybody wore a Trump mask. But again, I'm not <laughs> right. I think that would create quite the furor. Yes. Oh. I actually created yeah. a meme and I don't do memes that I was like, how can I move this words over? And I figured it out. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that we have to get to the other side of this. We don't want to be fighting with Karens on the street. And there's a lot of them. There's um, door Nazis at some of the hardware stores and restaurants that don't know yeah. any better. Yeah. Um, you know, the only thing I can say is that Wherever you fall into the divide in all of this, we are living in a period of deep schism and duality. And experiencing this level of duality on an, on a, an extended basis either allows you to come to some clarity about who you are, or it will more divide your own divided personality. Um, <clears throat> You know I don't talk about politics a lot, and I'm basically not a political person. Having said that, I find it pathological what has passed for political conversation in this country for the last four years. Whether or not you support President Trump, the level of pathology you exhibit in hating him indicates the level of disassociation you have from your own political process. I was a Democrat for many, many years. I don't vote anymore, but ideologically, I would be a social liberal and probably a fiscal conservative. Having said that, when Barack Obama was president, I prayed for him and I hoped he was successful. And I watched in disappointment as he sold out time and time and time again. So with those memories as a framework, I have stood by and I have watched Donald Trump and I've said, not one of my favorite people, but I have some stories about him because I was in New York City when he emerged. 
Most people don't know Trump emerged in 1980 on the national scene when he was 33 years old. That was the beginning of his public life to the nation. And some of the stories about Donald Trump are colorful and whether they're true or not, some of them are part of legend, some of them are part of rumor and innuendo. The man is far bigger than any of the stories that anybody's gonna tell about him. The only story Donald Trump's gonna tell is when he leaves office, what he left behind just as every other president. And I think every president deserves that until they've demonstrated otherwise. And my prayer is that America wakes up and stops requiring leaders to do what they themselves should do for themselves, which is wake up, realize you've been sold a boatload of lies and begin living your life according to a more organic reality. That's my political discussion. You know, I was never political either. Um, and I just registered to vote for the second time in my life. I also don't believe in religion because I had it crammed down my throat when I was a kid. So... Um, well, I don't believe in religion either. <laughs> but I believe in a creator and I believe in the power of the heart to speak to creator. And I believe in this earth strongly as part of that creational process. Far more important than any religion yeah. or spiritual or religious leader. Well, I think we're getting there now because we're realizing in this time of, shall we say independence for seniors, really serious independence. Yeah. Um, and the level of what we went through um, and I mean, I, you know, so politically, I was never political. When I saw Donald Trump on that TV show where he was, you're fired, you're fired. I thought, wow, what an arrogant, you know. Yep, yep, so yeah. I didn't like him when he came in. But for me, I care about my country and I care about the world I'm leaving to my children and my grandchildren. And had he not come in, none of this cleanup would be going on. But I really encourage people to just simply look up the executive orders and you might change your mind about how you feel about the job he's doing because you don't get to know. The news is owned by George Soros. You don't get to see any benefits because the cities are being taken over by these Antifa and BLM people and all of our energy is kind of been focused there. So there's these weird chapters of fear, fear, fear trying to destroy the American public. But even deeper than that is the children. I go back to the children. And what is Trump's initial promise when he was brought into office was to end human trafficking. And that includes child trafficking. Yeah. And what people aren't aware of is that this whole pandemic was never about a virus. It was about human trafficking. And what's going on during all this keeping people ho at home, keeping people behind a mask. It's all such a huge distraction. Whereas I trust and hope that these explosions, that these fires, that these huge military, um, ugh, I guess they're called military ops that are going on, the operations all over the place are really about cleaning up uh, what's going on. And I personally, in my canyon, have had four different huge Chinook military helicopter uh, mm -hmm. flybys. And three of them at one time really took me out of my seat because I was on the air. I was on a live Skype show. I turned mm -hmm. my computer around the first time and yeah, everybody could see it, but they circled around about two minutes later and came back and they were scary close. And the doors were open and they were filled with military people that some neighbors said, you know, they had their weapons and their helmets and their full gear. What the hell? So I finally did um, learn what it was. And it was that the military had money they need to spend for the rest of the year. So they're doing this exercise in Colorado with these very heavy retrofitted, these things have new modifications. 
This is in Boulder, Colorado. Modifications of these metal boxes, four on each side, wired together. They were so scary looking. I couldn't believe it was in my peaceful little mountain neighborhood. But here we are. We need money for people. We need money for people to eat. We've got more homeless right now than ever before. Yeah. And the military has too much money. Yeah. They need to do these expensive exercises and scare the crap out of us. Or is there a reason? Every time they went by, I would point, it's down there. I mean, yeah, go get them. Here's something that I pointed out a number of times. We have not had a new military operation in four years. That's right. From the time that Donald Trump took office, we've had maybe some little hiccups along the way. North Korea kind of erupted a little bit. A couple little nothing. Now, I will tell you that in order for what has occurred for the last four years to occur, not only are we talking about the military and the diplomatic corps and the international relations that are constantly in flux, but stop and think about this for a minute. The CIA has been the major instigator of every war since, North, since Korea and every minor war since Korea. Who muzzled Langley? Hmm? Because it's been awful quiet. Just saying that uh, we're not in the America that we have been in for the last 70 years. Something changed. What Just do you saying. Think, what do you think changed? Hmm. Who do you think's in charge? I think who's in charge is less important than the operation that's being run. I think there are point men. I think there are commanders. I think there are public figures. But I think behind the scenes, what we're really seeing, or what we're not seeing is more telling, that certain factions have been shut down cold, financially, and in terms of their ability to run operations. Now Will that continue? I hope so. Now yeah. we're talking. Yeah. How many CEOs stepped down after selling off a pile of stock? Lots. You're muted. You're muted. Yeah, over the last two years, we've seen hundreds of CEOs step down, usually at the end of the year, when their boards basically pulled their chains in, and they were told. I mean, look, we're like Japanese culture here. In Japan, you're shamed, you have a choice. You resign, put your head down and go away, or you kill yourself. Here in America, it's called resignation. And hundreds of CEOs of public and private corporations have resigned without any real reason. But having said that, for the entire time that I've done this show, I have had an, an axiomatic saying that human trafficking and, and specifically pedophilia is how business has been done on the international scene for centuries. It is disgusting. It is aberrant. It has everything to do with sexual predation, adrenochrome harvesting, the harvesting of souls. We have lived in a macabre universe of bloodshed of the innocent for hundreds, if not thousands of years, this has to stop. And maybe that's really what's going on, is the blood of the innocent has cried out from the ground. And now we have coronavirus, and now we have a reset. Hmm. I think that when Trump promised when he first came in, that it has remained his priority. And I do believe these explosions and perhaps these fires over the Getty Museum. Mm. Um, yeah. 
would have a purpose, an intention. And I think the explosions also, um, and again, I'm watching a lot of videos that have documentation. My favorite lately, uh, yesterday was called Timeline Dash Donald Trump Q. Find that one. Because I found it. I saw that. That was really good. So what I believe is going on was that when Donald Trump arrived at that old creep um, Bush's funeral, Senior Bush, everybody had been given a folder the night before. And the following day, Trump famously walked in a few minutes late in front of all of them, and they had all been served their folder. And in that folder, it said, we have everything. And what I believe is that the NSA, when they started hacking all of us and we were complaining, they also hacked the pedivores. They also hacked the worst of the monsters. I think, yeah, I, I think that what, what came out in that video, well, I think we saw the same one. Is that this was a trap that was laid a long time ago, possibly 70 years ago. This has been going on a long time. And I suspect we have closed the loop on a cycle. Um, I'm going to talk about this in a future show, but I'll let this leak a little bit. That began in 1960 and reached its climax in 1963 with another president who I think also knew this. Mm -hmm. And I think that cycle of tragedy and sorrow in America is where we are closing the loop as we go through this time. I mean, I get chills saying what I just said. Literally, I get chills. It's exciting. Yeah. It's exciting to think that things could actually change, even though most of the people have no idea what's going on. We who do are in it to win it now. And many years ago, John Kennedy Jr., before he was killed, yes. he, was, he yes. said, I will avenge my father's killers, even if I have to take down a government. My favorite... <laughs> Trump moment will be if all of a sudden the ticket says Trump Kennedy and he comes out of the cloud and shows up. I mean, I don't know if it's possible, but that would be a moment where everybody would have to finally shut the hell up and say, wait, what? And then they might start asking more questions. But that movie that we're referring to, the timeline, what I wanted to say about that was it showed President Trump going to each country that we feel, because we've been lied to, hates us. And he made peace with all those Asian countries. In the last uh, year or two years, Trump has gone and made peace with countries that we would never imagine, unless, of course, you read his executive orders or actions. What he's done has been phenomenal. But in that film, you saw him shake hands with heads of countries that don't shake hands. Yes, well, those presidents have waited a long time for a leader that they could talk to who wasn't run by the cabal. You know, and I guess at this point, I've kind of put a lot of stuff out that I don't normally talk about, except to say this, um, don't look at the human figures involved. Look at what's going on behind the scenes. People, if you want a better world, you have the opportunity to have it. Put aside your biases, your prejudices, and your hatred long enough for this thing to unwind. That's the only thing I'm asking for. I think we ought to probably wrap it up at this point. This has been a fascinating show. and We went all over the place. We can, but we, we closed it up real nicely. I, I see nothing here that doesn't all tie together. The crop circles... Um, all the magnificent things we talked about, even William Levengood's work and all the things that people can go back and look at our earlier show together where we talked about William Levengood and the crop circles. And um, I think everything ties together synchronistically. So, uh, so you know, this show is brought to you by, ta-da, Evo C60. 
And we're going to come back. We're going to have Chris with us probably in a week or so. We're going to talk some sciencey stuff. But we wanted to get a conversation in today that um, was human and revealed a lot of the work that Patty's done and continues to influence in the field, even though she's not in it. She, Patty, Patty's not outstanding in her field anymore. Nope. She's sitting in the mountains on her deck, um, helping the world to heal in some pretty cool ways. So let people know where they can find you. Talk uh, get, again, cropcirclefilms.com, right? Yeah, cropcirclefilms.com are my movies. And c60evo.com, evo like evolution. Exactly. Because what I'm doing now is working with the actual lab in Texas that's been manufacturing carbon-60 molecules for 29 years, longer than anybody else. I think it's the only real lab in America. Yeah. They did fly me down uh, to discuss a deal, and we became instant partners because I take a lot of C60. I have... You can't taken- get any closer than the source. Rice University is the home of C60. That's where it was discovered. And Houston... Uh, y'all own that down there. So, yeah, yeah. that's that's it. That's going to wrap it up for this time. This is Off Planet Radio in a weird kind of way. And um, the truth is inside you. Go find it. We'll see you the next time. Peace out. This is Off Planet Radio.